Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at chromosomes in interphase, an overview of mitotic stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis, comparing animal and plant mitosis, and then we'll finish with a summary. So let's first talk about the cell in interphase, which is the stage in between divisions. So in interphase, the DNA becomes replicated. So remember, just as a recap for the cell cycle, most of the cell spends its time in the phase I, which is interphase. Interphase is followed by mitosis, where the chromosomes end up dividing into two areas. And then in cytokinesis, the cell splits into two. But in interphase is where we have the S phase, where the DNA actually gets replicated. So the DNA strands unwind, and then we get these other template strands forming copies, and we end up with two sets of DNA, one for each of the daughter cells. Before replication, each of the chromosomes that we have exists as a single chromatid. So we call this structure one chromatid. So this will double as it replicates, and this will happen for every single chromosome. So once that DNA has been replicated, each of our chromosomes will be replicated as a set as well. So then each chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids, and these are joined in a central structure known as the centromere. So what we had was our chromatid here, and then eventually this replicated into two copies of the same thing. So these are now two sister chromatids. So again, these are two genetically identical chromatids, and here in the middle we have the centromere. So the DNA replicates in interphase stage, but then interphase is followed by mitosis, which has four main stages. This is prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And they come in this order, and you need to be aware of the different features that happen in each stage. So the first stage will be prophase. This is then followed by metaphase. We then have anaphase. And then the last stage of mitosis is telophase. And then once telophase is finished, we get this green arrow, which is the cytokinesis. So the overall process of mitosis is to divide the replicated chromosomes into separate parts of the cell, i.e. opposite areas of the cell so that then the cell can split down the middle and divide into two. So interphase is where we replicated the DNA, mitosis is where we separate it into two different regions, and then cytokinesis is when we divide the cell into two individual cells. So let's go through each stage one by one. The first stage is prophase. So it's the first stage in mitosis, and this is where we actually begin to see the chromosomes visually. So this is the first stage found here. So before prophase, all of the DNA that's being replicated is in long, tangled threads, so it's very hard to see and it's very dispersed. If you were to look down the microscope at the nucleus, it just looks like a big tangled mess. But during prophase, the DNA condenses and it supercoils into a shorter, more condensed structure. So supercoiling is basically when you have long, thin material like DNA, you end up winding itself about its own molecule. So you end up kind of getting a piece of string, wrapping it around itself in lots and lots of different ways until it becomes visible enough that you can see it. So in interphase, it looks like this, but in prophase, it condenses and it looks like this. And here we can see we've got our sister chromatids lined up, connected by that centromere. And then the other feature that we see in prophase is that the envelope around the nucleus, or the nuclear envelope, which holds the DNA, disintegrates and breaks down. And therefore, this allows the genetic material to move more freely through the cell. The centrioles are particular organelles that are involved in mitosis, and they're made of protein. So what they do is they divide, so we've got now two sets, and they move to the opposite ends of the cell. So we call the cells the poles. So if you think about the cell as being a kind of planet, where you've got two poles, you can call them north and south if it helps you remember them. So we've got two poles, and then between the poles we've got the equator, which will become more important in a minute. So these organelles here are the centrioles, and what they've done is they've divided and they've each moved to one of the poles. So the centrioles have a particularly important role in making something called the spindle fibres. So they form as long fibres of protein from the centrioles, and these make up the spindle apparatus. So here we've got the centrioles, and the spindle fibres are made by the centrioles, and they're these long filamentous proteins, and they're going to be useful later in moving around these sister chromatids that we have, to separate them into different areas in the next couple of stages. In plant cells, what we see is they don't have centrioles as organelles. They do have a spindle network or an apparatus. This just forms directly from the cytoplasm. So in a plant cell here that's about to divide, we still have the same stages going on, but there's no centrioles. And you can see these black lines here representing the spindle fibers, 
and we also still have the nuclear membrane breaking down. So the main difference there is that there's no centrioles. So as a summary of what happens in prophase, the DNA supercoils and becomes condensed, the nuclear envelope breaks down or disintegrates, in animals the centrioles divide and move to the poles, and then the spindle fibres form, but in plant cells obviously this just arranges itself in the cytoplasm, not from centrioles. So the next stage that happens is metaphase, so it's the second phase of mitosis, and in this case what we're talking about are the chromosomes lining up at the centre of the cell, or the equator of the cell. So remember the cell again has two poles, and we've got an equator running through the middle of the cell, and now the chromosomes, or the chromatids, are going to be lining up along the equator. And this is just a micrograph showing this. So what happens is the spindle fibres that were formed in prophase become attached to the chromosomes at the centromere. So you can see here we've got one of the sister chromatids on this side, and then you've got another one on the other side. And this structure here is the centromere. And here are the spindle fibres attaching to that centromere. And the reason for this is so that the spindles can start moving and pulling at the chromosomes. So the chromosomes then get pulled along, and they get pulled along to the length of the equator of the cell. So you can see here we've got the centrioles, and they form these spindle fibres. The chromosomes are now kind of clustered in the middle here, just after prophase where the nuclear envelope broke down. And then after a bit of time, the chromosomes are moved to this kind of region of the cell, which is the equator. So they do this by tugging and pulling away at the chromosomes until they're lined up really neatly. So what this does is it prepares them to be separated in the next stage, which is anaphase, and that will be the third stage. So a summary of what happens in metaphase, the centromeres attach to the spindle fibres, and the chromosomes line up along the equator. The third phase is anaphase, and this is where we have separation of the chromatids. So the chromatids on each of the chromosomes are separated and pulled to opposite poles of the cell. So remember what we're trying to do here is we're trying to form two separate cells. So each new cell that's going to form has to have a complete set of genetic material. So originally we had a chromosome that then got copied and attached to its copy at the centromere. So now one cell needs to have this one and one cell needs to have that one. So in anaphase, those spindles that were attached in the previous phase now pull away these things from each other and they end up going to opposite poles of the cell. So in anaphase, the chromosomes split in half and each copy of that material goes to one pole of the cell, and they're still attached to the spindle fibres, which are then pulling them in that direction, moving to the poles with the help of proteins called motor proteins. So the motor proteins kind of act on the spindle fibres, and they act like motors to basically pull the chromosome along the fibres and move it to the right direction. The process of moving requires ATP because it needs energy input, and so around the spindle fibres we have a gathering of mitochondria, to provide that ATP. So you'll see in lots of diagrams and micrographs that around these spindle fibres, we've got mitochondria. The spindle fibres are really important to anaphase. So they're positioned to guide the chromatids to the poles, and we're still calling those copies chromatids. And you can imagine that the spindle fibres contract and use those motor proteins to take this side's chromatids to this pole, and this side's chromatids, and this side's chromatids to the other pole. Once the chromatids have reached the opposite poles, we then have individual chromosomes again, and now we call them chromosomes. So these were chromatids, and then after anaphase, we have chromosomes again. So what this leads to is in anaphase, we get each pole of the cell getting one full set of chromosomes, which are identical to the set of chromosomes on the opposite pole. This means that when it divides, each new cell will have this complete set of DNA. So as a summary in a table here, we've got the centromeres splitting to allow these chromatids to separate into chromosomes, and the chromatids move to separate poles. And then in telophase, which is the fourth stage of mitosis, the nucleus starts to reappear around each set of chromosomes, and then the chromosomes become invisible again because they disperse and become less condensed. So you can see in this picture here that the genetic material kind of clusters together, and then it will start becoming this blobby mess again as it disperses out. And eventually, the nucleus is going to reform around each set of DNA. So the separated chromatids reach the poles of the cell, the spindle fibres break down because they're no longer needed, and then the chromosomes begin to lengthen, uncurl, and then they can't be seen anymore under the microscope. As we've said, the nuclear envelope reforms around each of those lengthening sets of chromosomes. So here what we would see is the beginning of the nuclear envelope just forming around each of the sets at the poles of the cell. And then because at the end there are two sets of chromosomes, at the end of this phase, or telophase, there's going to be a cell with two distinct nuclei. 
So it's ready to now split into two. So we've got nucleus here, and we've got a nucleus there as well. So we've got two nucleuses, or two nuclei. So what happens now is that the cell's ready for the next stage, which is where the cytoplasm splits into two, and this will be in cytokinesis, and this will be ready to make two new cells. And each cell will have a nucleus, and it will have its own set of organelles, like centrioles as well. So to summarize this phase, this is the last stage of mitosis. The chromosomes become lengthened, the spindle fibers disintegrate because they're no longer needed, and the nucleus starts to reform around each set of DNA. So cytokinesis is the last stage in cell division, but it's not part of mitosis. Mitosis is describing the movement of chromosome copies to each pole of the cell. Cytokinesis is separate to mitosis, so it's really important that you remember this. So the cell becomes split into two new daughter cells with identical nuclei and the same genetic information within them. In animals, what you see is the plasma membrane folding inwards until there's two dents meeting to separate the two daughter cells. So it's almost like the cell is being pinched at two opposite points, and eventually that pinch will meet each other and will have two cells budding off into two separate entities. In plant cells, it's a little different because we obviously have cellulose to consider as well in the cell wall. So cellulose builds up at the equator, and then we call this the end plate, and then this will help form the cell walls of each of the new plant cells. So we've got two nucleuses here, and then we've got the end plate forming here. And then what we see is there's a bit of plasma membrane that forms in the middle of the end plate, resulting in two fully separated plant cells. So if we were to compare animal and plant mitosis, we'd see a few similarities, but a few minor differences as well. So for animals, the shape of the cell goes around a shape before it divides into two cells, whereas a plant cell maintains its shape throughout the process. Animal cells use centrioles for mitosis, but plant cells don't use centrioles. The spindles just arise from the cytoplasm. In the animal, the cytokinesis stage of the division means that the membrane folds inwards, but in the plant we get a cell plate forming inside to separate the two cells. The spindle fibres in animal cells disintegrate during telophase, but with the plant they stay around to help form that cell wall between the two cells. And for animals, mitosis can occur in most tissue type cells, whereas for plants it only happens in meristem tissue. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.